The second week of I Thirst follow-up, we will speak about Jesus as our Savior. This is a very important topic to distinguish from the Protestants when they say, Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior, right? This is a beautiful thought, etc., but there's a lot in that. And so what does it really mean for Jesus to be our Savior? And again, we always take this with regards to St. Thomas Aquinas and the way that the saints have taught us. What does it mean for us to be saved by Jesus? Here, it's not saved in just any sense, but again, it's saved in the traditional understanding of the saints. And so, what are we saved from? We are saved from sin. And so, we have to understand what we're being saved from in order to understand and fully appreciate what it means for Jesus to be our Savior. For example, if you just save somebody you know, from falling off a cliff and they had no idea that they were falling off a cliff, you know, they were just unconscious the whole time, and then finally they wake up, they're going to be like, what just happened? I have no idea. You know, I'm completely unconscious. I don't know what you do. What did you do for me, right? And so here you have to see that in order to understand what it means for Jesus to be our Savior, we have to understand what exactly we are being saved from and how awful it is, you know, that thing that we uh, did, right, and that basically sin and all of the ramifications of sin, Jesus saved us from that mess and that awful black abyss of sin and he saved us from that so that we can do what so we can go to the heights of heaven with him that is what it means for jesus to be our savior so first we need to understand sin and this is why the protestants and the catholics we are very 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 different and when people say oh you know all religions are the same it actually shows a great ignorance of the religions because if you really looked at what the Protestants and the Catholics say, or even like for example, just take any other you know religion like Buddhists or whatever, you know here other denominations are not really religions. There's only one religion, right? And so here, if you look at what they think about sin, you're like, oh dear, this is not exactly correct here. And so we have to have the right notion of sin in order to understand what it means for Jesus to be our Savior. So you see that when people just say, oh, just accept Jesus. Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Well, what about sin? And how has that gotten rid of? How is Jesus saving me from that sin? How did that exactly happen? Because Jesus actually set up different ways for that sin to get out of us that we have to follow. And we can't just say this thing, Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior, and suddenly just like all the sin is gone, right? And so this is very important to understand exactly the nature of sin then you can understand here what are we talking about with salvation. Otherwise, we're going to be totally ungrateful and we're going to be like that person who was just like knocked unconscious, they're falling off the cliff, you know, and then somebody just grabbed us and then we woke up and we're like, oh, hi, how's it going? Right? And they had no idea that they were just saved off you know, from falling off a cliff. You know, and so here it's super important, you know, or like if you take an example of a baby, you know, the baby was just saved from a fiery, you know, fiery house. The baby had no idea because it's just crying. It doesn't have any remembrance of it. When the child is seven years old, they're like, oh, you saved me from a fiery house. It was on fire and I was going to die. Now the child can understand, you know, so they're like, oh, now I understand what that meant. But as a baby, you can't do anything with that child because he doesn't have have reason yet and so here what is this sin so the sin of course is going to be original sin mortal sin and venial sin and here these concepts of sin we'll see it's going to be very clear and very catholic and just makes common sense and if there's no idea of these kinds of sins then we're in big trouble <laughs> okay and so here the easiest one to understand first is the mortal sin and venial sin because mortal sin is serious sin and venial sin is not so serious and this is a lesser sin now the whole question then is we know that some sins are more serious than others 
And this is going to be a very important point that we know which ones are serious and which ones are not serious. We need to know which ones are mortal and which ones are not mortal. So for example, in this day and age, when we say to people, you know, it's a mortal sin not to go to Mass on Sundays. And here people will be like, oh my gosh, that's so cruel. That's the serious sin. And because if I commit that sin, then, you know, I'm going to go to hell because I committed a mortal sin of choosing by my own volition. You know, here, this is all the person's fault, you know, not to go to Mass on Sundays. And this is a very important thing to answer. Because here, if we realize that if we have to worship God, right, one hour out of all the, you know, 24 times seven hours a week, right, here this is God, and to give God that one hour on Sunday, right, and just to say, oh, sorry, I don't have time for the most powerful, the most beautiful, the most, you know, gorgeous, the most wise, you know, the most beautiful everything in the world, right, because I have something else, right, you know, one hour in that entire week, right, we can't even say hello to the King of Kings and, you know, God Almighty. That's a big problem, you know. This is a really, really bad thing. And so here, to have an idea of mortal sin, we actually need to be taught by somebody. And so here, this is why Holy Mother Church, right, is that gift from Jesus. And this is why he says, the gates of hell shall never prevail against the church. And the church is the one that has the holy magisterium or the teaching power to teach us what it means, right, to have a mortal sin or a venial sin. And so here, we have to know what that is. We have to know what mortal sin is, what it does to the soul. It kicks out the entire life of God out of us, all of those things there, right? When we see what that means, this is just really, really heinous. And so here, that's why we have confession, all those different kinds of things. And so our Lord established, first of all, baptism so that we can get that life of the Trinity within us. That's why baptism is so important, right? In baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then if we lose that life, we need to get it back through confession. And here we need to go to confession as soon as we commit a mortal sin. And usually these sins are going to be the sins of missing Mass on Sundays through our own fault, or it's going to be some kind of sin of impurity. And this is why we need help and we need somebody to guide us in this. That's why we need Catholic school to teach us what are the mortal sins or if we don't know to ask a priest for help and so God has established these ways the sacraments baptism and confession really is what we need in this world and of course the Eucharist you know we need to go to mass every Sunday he's established this means by which he's going to save us right if we just like oh Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior and I just make up the way that I'm saved because that's the only sentence I have then we're missing the whole thing of what it means for God to be a savior. Because when God saves us, he saves us in a very specific way. God is not a vague God, right? If he is omnipotent and omniscient, he knows everything, he's not going to be vague and he's going to be the best teacher ever. And he's going to teach us everything precisely. And so here, when we hear this as Jesus is my savior, immediately the truth comes to our head. God established the way to save my soul. What is this? Through baptism and confession. And here through knowing and loving Holy Mother Church's teachings and doing everything that the saints of Holy Mother Church did, right? And so basically we have all the means of the sacraments, right? Baptism, confession, Eucharist, then we have the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Rosary, and now everything is very precise. Everything is very, very clear. You know, as opposed to Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior, I just have to say it and believe it, and that's it, and that's all, right? Here, it doesn't match up with the Bible. It doesn't match up with the precision of God, because what does it actually mean for Jesus to be my Lord and Savior? Right? What did he save me from? Well then, sin. But what is sin? There's all these kinds of sins. 
how did God save me from my sins? Well, he gave us baptism, confession, all these things, right? Jesus said, whose sins you remit are remitted, right? That's straight from the Bible there, right? There are priests to do this, which Jesus ordained. We have the Mass, and here we have all the sacraments. And so here, as Catholics, we see that it is very precise what it means for Jesus to be our Savior. He saved us because he loves us. Right? But we have to tap into that grace by inserting ourselves into the sacramental system. Right? We have all of God's power here. Right? He's waiting, but he's not going to force us to go. How are we going to tap into his love? How are we going to tap into his forgiveness? We have to confess our sins. We have to confess our sins to a priest. We have to pray and go to Mass. We have to get our children baptized. We have to love the Rosary. We have to love Mary. Jesus came through Mary, right? So all graces are going to come, come through Mary. So we have to have a great reverence for Our Lady. And all of these things are super precise. They're super duper Catholic. And as soon as you see those things, you're like, oh, this is all vague over here and I want precision. I really want the way that Jesus set it up and I want the way that the saints have done it time and time and time again and they pass down to us so carefully. So when you hear this, Jesus is my savior, you understand, wow, all these beautiful things flood into your mind. Baptism, confession, rosary, mass, adoration, mental prayer, living the lives of holiness, right, and virtue, and copying the lives of the saints, and just being flooded by all of these beautiful Catholic concepts, which are right from the Bible. And if you read the Bible, and if you know history, you become Catholic, right? This is what, you know, uh, so many of the saints have said. And it's so precise and so rich and so beautiful, as opposed to this other thing. Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. And then you start making up your own thing after that. And you have, you know, how many different thousands of denominations when they interpret that in any way that they want to. When here, we should always just know that God has set up the church in order to teach us very clearly what we need to do in order to get to heaven. Not because we make it up, but because God revealed it to us and has taught us clearly how to get to him. Let's give everything to Jesus in the way that he wants and established.